This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. We begin the segment with news from the courts. Seven men, including a Jamaican national, arraigned before the courts this afternoon in connection with that big drug bust earlier this week in Andros. LaDon Davis was in court for the arraignment. Five-year-old Omar Penn in the red shirt, Eddie Bannister Jr. wearing the gray checkered top, 46-year-old Edney Roll in the navy blue checkered long sleeve, 34-year-old James Jones clad in aqua and gray top, 45-year-old Nathan Stubbs in the lime green shirt, Jamaican national 31-year-old Omar Andre Blackwood in a plain white top, and Patrick Knowles wearing the royal blue cartoon printed top were arraigned before Magistrate Andrew Forbes on several drug-related charges. The seven men were charged on one count of possession of dangerous drugs with the intent to supply, importation of dangerous drugs with the intent to import, conspiracy to possess dangerous drugs, and conspiracy to import dangerous drugs into this country between May 25th and July 15th. All of the accused pleaded not guilty to the charges, but Jamaican national Omar Andre Blackwood pleaded guilty. Prosecutor Ursel Dorset told the court that it was around 12.55 on Wednesday, July 15th, when officers positioned off Kemps Bay Andros spotted a vessel described as a go-fast boat en route from Jamaica to Andros. Officers were in pursuit of the vessel and chased it for a while before it stopped. Then they discovered the seven occupants on board, and the drugs were discovered during a search of the vessel. Additionally, yeah. Doris had sat in an interview Blackwood told police that he was turned on to the other six Bahamian men by a Bahamian woman he met in Jamaica who told him there were great opportunities in the Bahamas. He later got on board the vessel and saw bags that he said appeared to have been drugs. The marijuana weighed in at 5,050 pounds and had been confiscated by police. Blackwood's attorney, Wayne Monroe QC, asked the court to consider the fact that his client has no previous convictions are matters in this jurisdiction, is a taxi driver by profession, and has two small children. Now in sentencing, Blackwood was given 26 months on the first charge, 18 months on the second count, 26 months on the third, and another 18 months on the fourth count, all of which will run concurrently for his guilty plea. And upon completion of his sentence, Blackwood will be deported back to Jamaica. The other six men were denied bail and remanded to the Department of Corrections. They returned to court on November 10th. LaDon Davis, ZNS Network News. Immigration authorities have prosecuted three people for harboring illegal nationals under the amended Immigration Act. Three Haitians who held legal work permits to live and work in the Bahamas, Estelius Tide, Robinson Guerriere, and Sinfilin Remy, were found guilty of those offenses. Their permits were set to expire on January 20th of next year. Following an illegal boat landing in Eleuthera on June 2nd, the three Haitian work permit holders hit 15 people in their homes in Eleuthera in an attempt to avoid apprehension by law enforcement officers. As a result, they were arrested and later charged in the magistrate's court for harboring illegal persons. On June 13, the trio pled guilty and were convicted as charged. Their work permits were ordered revoked and deportation recommended. Immigration Minister Fred Mitchell said, however, that in the future there will be a push for terms of imprisonment or fines where people are convicted for these types of offenses. Now, immigration officials say they will remain vigilant in enforcing the country's immigration laws and intend to prosecute persons to the fullest extent of the law who contravene our laws. There are currently 338 migrants housed at the Carmichael Road Detention Center. 242 are Haitian. That group, according to immigration officials, are expected to be repatriated to Port-au-Prince, Haiti, sometime next week. After more than three decades, the home of an elderly man on Labor Street in the Bain and Grantstown constituency was demolished, all courtesy of the Urban Renewal 2.0 program. It was five years ago that 73-year-old Bernard Grant's home was destroyed by fire, and he found himself living in substandard conditions. Mr. Grant is expected to receive the keys of his new home next week, Friday, and he told our news team yesterday that he's very grateful. I live long enough to see they come after all, you know, and that to me that's important, really important, because now this year making me 73, I don't know, old man, and they couldn't come in a better time, sweetie, believe you me, like right now, you see. And see the condition I live in? I mean, what do you think about the condition you see I live in? It? And it's horrible. Coming for the Bain and Grandstown constituency, the Honorable Dr. Bernard Nottage witnessed the demolition firsthand and not only applauded the urban renewal team for keeping their promises, but also assisting those Bahamians who need it most. This is a very emotional occasion for me because 
There are a lot of people who are living in substandard conditions and we have programs to try to assist them. Um, but when I came by and saw this place where he was living, you saw the state it was in. And no complaints, you know. Just going from day to day, doing the best you can. And uh, you, you want to help. And you can't help everybody. Um, even the Urban Renewal Program can't help everybody who needs help, particularly at the same time. Well, this story just came into our newsroom for all you Western Union money users out there. Users of Western Union will now have to find another way of sending funds to their loved ones abroad. This as the company that offers Western Union services announces that it will no longer offer the service. In a press release, the board and directors of Fidelity Bank and Trust International Limited and its subsidiary boards announced today that it will no longer offer Western Union money transfer services at its branches and sub-agent locations as the, at the end of today, Friday, July 17th. The decision affects its locations throughout the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands, and Turks and Caicos Islands. No reason was given for the closure, but Fidelity Bank says it sincerely apologizes for any inconvenience caused to its customers as a result of this closure. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm C.S. Scatterly. The Value Added Tax Department has announced that the VAT Free Shopping Scheme will begin August 15th. As a result, the VAT and Customs Department are partnering with Global Blue, an international operator of tax refund systems, to introduce the automated rebate tracking system for the Bahamas. Merchants will continue to sell a wide range of products to tourists net of VAT and record this information in standard format that can be monitored electronically by the Customs Department. With the introduction of the standardized electronic platform, the VAT Department is now opening up participation in the tax-free or VAT-off scheme to all qualifying businesses that sell qualifying goods. In the interim period since January, only stores that made at least half of their sales to tourists were authorized to participate. The draft rules to govern the modified scheme can be located on the VAT Department's website. In other business news, the 2015 Andros Business Outlook is set for July 23rd at the Daniel Dream Center in Nichols Town under the theme Securing Our Andros Through Planning, Partnership, Productivity. Minister of Finance, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, is expected to deliver the keynote address. The fourth Andros Business Outlook team promised a dynamic range of subjects keyed specifically to the unique character and needs of Andros. TCL Group President and Founder of the Outlook Series, Joan Albrey, indicated that those who attend the Andrus Business Outlook will be particularly pleased with the lineup of speakers this year, and in particular the plans the Prime Minister is expected to announce for the island. And in international news, U.S. consumer prices rose for a fifth straight month in June, pushed higher by a rise in the cost of fuel and food. Prices rose 0.3% last month after increasing by 0.4% in May. Continuing price rises are likely to strengthen the case for an increase in U.S. interest rates. However, the year-on-year -year rate is still only 0.1%, although excluding food and fuel, so-called core inflation was 1.8%. This has been your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm C.S. Scatterly. Well, if you live in any part of the Bahamas, you know that summer is in full swing and most days the heat leaves us reaching for a cool drink. But what about man's best friend, your dog or cat? How should you take care of your pets on these hot summer days? Jim Anita Swain has some tips you should keep in mind. It's definitely the dog days of summer and we all are trying to stay cool. Shelter manager and education officer at the Bahamas Humane Society, Percy Grant, says pet owners need to pay special attention to their animals at this time as well. We encourage people to please, if you have a dog, if you are going to have a dog, build a shelter. A dog needs to have a dog house that they can go in and get out of, out of this kind of type, type of heat. If you um, are going to take a dog, example, for a walk, please take a knapsack, put a, a, a bottle 
a water in it and, a, and also a bowl so that the dog can get water. We have had countless of animals die from heat stroke um, during the summer months um, due to the fact that uh, the owner just unconsciously wasn't aware or didn't think that the dog needed to have water. Grant says during the summer, there is also a challenge with families taking their pets to the beach. We also have issues on during the summer months, families taking their dogs to the beaches to have a picnic and forgetting that animals do not drink salt water. And so they have their fun, they have their Kool-Aid, they have their drinks, whatever, but nobody thinks about the dog. We have had countless of animals died over the years by um, after a nice um, holiday, kids come in here screaming and hollering because the dog started to convulse from the heat stroke and a lot of them died. Some of them we say, but a lot of them died. He also says pet owners should not leave animals in hot cars. Remember, if, it, if, it's, if it's 75 degrees on the outside or even 90 degrees on the inside, it takes 100 degrees, 10 minutes, and it's 100 degrees inside that car. So that dog should be safe and should be the window should be down. In fact, you really, really should not leave your dogs in the car at all, period. Or children. I mean, you know, I, we, as a humane organization, we have to think about people as well because we need people to take care of our animals. The Humane Society shelter manager again stressed the importance of keeping our extended family members cool this summer. Jiminita Swain, Saturnas Network News. It's time now for BTC Island Connection with Keishla Adderley. Somehow a cold drink tastes more refreshing when you're overlooking a family island beach. And Jeffrey Birch of the Small Hope Bay Lodge likes to keep that vibe going. At Small Hope Bay, we pride ourselves on having no TV. We're like a, we are connected. We have the Wi-Fi and it has to be dependable. It has to be reliable because people need to be able to connect when they need to connect. We give, we offer it free of charge, except we cut it off between 6.30 and 8.30 at night. That's time for eating comforters, drinking, and talking. We're not sure if comforters were on the menu at the Carry Earl, but it was a special stop for the Governor General, Her Excellency Dame Marguerite Pindling, who got to see her granddaughter's artwork on display. She's very artistic. They may not welcome dignitaries every day, but each guest gets the same level of charm with a touch of technology. That's what we like. For us, all our bookings and communication is done through internet and all my banking is done through internet and paying all my suppliers in, in Nassau for the mailboat. So it's very good and hopefully when the television system gets through to BTC and that's streaming will be wonderful. Christian Taylor, the administrative assistant at Swains Key Lodge, is at least a generation behind Birch. And as part of the internet generation, as far as she's concerned, the amenity is a given. The strength is always good and our guests are able to use hotspot when they're here to connect with home. They're really surprised to the fact that the strength is good in the rooms as well as in the kitchen. It's all over the property. So they're able to connect with Apple devices or whatever devices they bring, they can use to connect with home. So the next time you're thinking about a family island vacation, Birch wants to remind you of why BTC is important. You know, BTC is the lifeline of telecommunications. Keisha Adderley for the BTC Island Connection.